Good morning, Malakanyang Press Corps again. Welcome to our second press briefing today where we are joined by the Department of Interior and Local Government Secretary, Ben Hur Abalas Jr. and of course, PNP Chief Rodolfo Azarin Jr. We also have here some members <coughs> of the PNP Press Corps, welcome. Secretary Abalos will share with us updates on the committee that will review the courtesy resignation of high-ranking officials in the Philippine National Police in relation to the renewed drive to cleanse the organization. <coughs> Let's welcome Secretary Abalos. <coughs> Maraming salamat, Daphne. Of course, kay General Asurin, sa ating mga kababayan, magandang tanghali po sa inyong lahat. Halos isang buwan na nung tayo po ay nag-anunsyo na tayo umaapila na mag-resign ng mga general at mga koronel. At uh, kamukha po ng ating napangako, tayo ay nagbigay ng halos uh, isang buwan. At uh, last day of uh, filing of the resignation was, was yesterday. Unang-una, gusto ko magpasalamat sa lahat ng mga general sa lahat ng mga koronel na nag-resign po. No? Alam nyo, itong problema ito ay talagang hinarap nila bilang isang institusyon. I would like to thank the Philippine National Police as a whole. Bakit? Lumalabas po sa ating data that out of 955 generals and full colonels, 12 did not comply. Pero hindi lang ho 12, no? kung tutuusin nyo, isa na lang ang hindi nag-comply. Why? Of the 12, 5 have already retired. So that leaves us with 7. Of the 7, 6 are retiring. If we're going to look at the figures, technically, only 1 has not yet submitted the resignation out of 955. Muli, nagpapasalamat po kami no, sa ating mga general at koronel at sa buong Philippine National Police. <clears throat> Ngayon, uh, kamukha po ng ating nasabi, magkakaroon tayo ng isang five-man advisory group. Gusto ko lang hong reiterate I would like to reiterate that this is just an advisory group. They've got no salary, Nothing at all, no allowance, nothing. No. Uh, they're doing this voluntarily, they're just advising. No. And who are these five-man advisory group? Mamaya ho, babanggitin ko, isa-isa. Although, ang isa po sa kanila ay ipapangalan yung kanyang, uh, yung kanyang pangalan, kaya pag-uusapan pa ho namin ito, no? or how to go about this problem. Kasi importante is dapat ay maging transparent tayo. So I will just be announcing four names. So after this advisory group, ano po ang mangyayari? They will go through the records one by one. Iisa-isahin po itong mga pangalan. At pagkatapos, kung may makuwang tatanggapin ang resignation, ito ngayon ay ibibigay sa National Police Commission o sa Napolcom. From then on, ang Napolcom naman, ang iisa-isang i-review ulit ang mga pangalang tinanggap a resignation. Ngayon, let's go now to these five names. Uh, actually, four names because one person, no, ang isa, ayun niya hong pasabi ang kanyang pangalan. They are known for their unquestionable integrity, credibility, and untainted reputation. As we very well know, the first is Mayor Benjamin Magalong, who is the incumbent mayor of Baguio City. He graduated from the Philippine Military Academy and served as a Philippine Constabulary and the Philippine National Police for more than 38 years. He is a Bemeldal police officer who retired as Police Deputy Director General. Ang pangalawa, he is the person who will steer this committee And we, we owed it that he should be the one. No? Of course, uh, ang sinasabi ko po ay walang iba kung hindi ang ating Chief PNP. Police General Rodolfo Asurin Jr. 
is a current chief of the Philippine National Police, a graduate of the Philippine Military Academy, and was the former commander of the Northern Police Area. The third is a civilian. Again, I would like to reiterate, this is purely voluntary. It has nothing to do with government work. That, uh, this is just an advisory group. He is the former de uh, Secretary of the National Defense, Secretary Gilbert Chudoro Jr., a lawyer, politician, and business executive. He studied law at the University of the Philippines, topped the bar exams, and obtained his Master's of Laws degree from Harvard University. He served as a congressman or representative of the first district of Tarlac for many years and later was appointed the Secretary of the National Defense. After leaving government service, he joined private companies and held corporate positions. Yung pangapat po ay si retired Major General Isagani Neres. Currently, the Undersecretary in the Office of the Presidential Advisor on Military Affairs is graduate of the Philippine Military Academy who was assigned in various posts in the Philippine National Police like the Police Anti-Crime Emergency Response, the Presidential Anti-Organized Crime Task Force, and the PNP Anti-Kidnapping Group before he was appointed under Secretary. So ito po, yung maibibigay kong pangalan, kamukha ng sinabi ko, yung panglima ay ayaw po munang pasabi ang kanyang pangalan, kaya ito'y, ito'y pag-uusapan pa po namin how to go about this. I am definite that this advisory group shall remain apolitical throughout the process of screening and in the end, penalize only those guilty and involved in the illegal drugs trade. Rest assured, that the government is working continuously to gain renewed and better trust, of course, the Philippine National Police of the public as our police remain committed to their mandate to serve and protect. Lastly, maski pa ulit-ulit kong sasabihin, ako'y taus-pusong nagmapasalamat sa ating mga kapulisan. Talagang hinarap po nila ang hamon they stood up to the challenge as an institution. Marami salamat po. Thank you, Secretary Abalos. And now we open the floor to some questions. We are uh, uh, on a tight schedule, I believe, so yes. we will entertain just a few questions. And I ask that you please uh, keep your questions within this topic. Thank you. We have Maricel Halili. Is that right? Or Katrina Domingo of ABS-CBN. Uh, good morning, sirs. Sir, may we know the profile of the lone police official who did not submit his resignation letter? If you're not um, allowed to divulge his name, can we just know which province he came from, his rank, and his reason for not submitting a courtesy resignation? Uh, the one who did not file the Oh, oh, wag na muna naming ilabas, no? Pag-usapan na lang muna natin. Sir, anyway, kahit province or district lang? Wag na muna, wag na muna. Uh, reason, sir, his reason for not um, submitting his courtesy resignation. Um, Chief Asurin be, could better be in a position to answer this question. Sir, please. Uh, Ma'am, uh, according to him, uh, that's uh, his uh, personal prerogative po. Follow-up question. Um, would he be... Uh, what is the PNP or the DALG's response to his refusal to submit that courtesy resignation? We, we fully respect his right. As I've told you before, uh, we are not ordering or commanding anyone. It was just an appeal. I would like to read it's an appeal. No sanctions will be done, nothing at all. Pero, but, siyempre, aalamin namin, bakit? No? Bakit ayaw niya? Yun, aalamin talaga namin ang gusto yun. But other than those, as I've, uh, I've told the people time and again and assured the police, no sanctions at all. Thank you. Okay, Maricel Halili, TV5. Hi, sir. Good morning po. Good morning. Pero, sir, itong isang general or colonel na hindi nag-submit ng resignation, will he still be investigated despite his refusal? Well, actually, Maricel, no? uh, and I would like to reiterate this again. Even without this call for resignation 
of the generals and colonels. There will always be continuous monitoring about drugs, continuous buildup of cases. Importante yan, up to the lowest rank, tuloy tuloy lang. And after this, probably it's time to even review the organization itself, the structure. Even the recruitment itself, the Philippine National Police Academy. No? Tignan, anong kulang, anong kulang na support, anong dapat nating maitulong pa ng gusto. Just look at the gaps. No? Kasi nga, we are now into cleansing. So, ibig sabihin nito, habang nililinis mo, dapat hindi na maulit. No? Anong kulang? So, probably, we'll, we'll have dialogues with with retired uh, police officers, with active police, anong kailangan ninyo, anong dapat natin gawin pa? No, there, there could be gaps. No, nothing is perfect. No? Yes. Pero yung sa five-man team, yung last na kukompleto ng five-man team, um, kung hindi siya pwedeng pangalanan, can you just give us a brief background? Da galing ba siya sa police? Uh, wa wa wag na muna, wag na muna. Mahirap na. Ay kung it's a very sensitive issue as far as the family is concerned. Wag na muna. Thank you. Do you have a microphone there? Okay. Please repeat your yeah. Uh, sir, kasama po si General Azrin sa five-man committee na sa sala doon sa mga nag-submit ng courtesy resignation. Pa eh, nag-submit na siya na sir ng courtesy resignation sa paano po yung magiging screening sa kanya, sir? Well, actually, no, uh, in-screen na siya uh, at nag-usap kami ng presidente tungkol dito. It is only but proper since, uh, of course, since, uh, hindi, obviously, hindi talang kapang kanya resignation, that he is needed there, the chief PNP, to also, you know, steer, I steer the committee, no? He's in a position to, to, to give, uh, probably, recent intelligence report, etc., etc., all the committee. Yes. Sir, ano pa magiging kapalaran ng mga hindi nagsumita ng courtesy resignation? Uh, wag po kayong mag-alala, no, sa ating mga kababayan, kamukha ng sinasabi ko, Kasi marami nagsasabi noon about the human rights, etc. Kamukha ng sinabi ko po, ako'y hindi nag-order ng tao. Ako'y nag-aapila sa kanila. Sinabi ko ang problema noon, yung mga nahuli nating pagkalaki-laki mga droga, ang nahuli mga police, no? si Mayo, and then ang Pideya. Kaya ako'y umaapila. No? Na, nakikita namin meron mga taong nasa likod dito na umahawak ng critical na posisyon. And so, sa pag-aapilang ito, ako'y masaya dahil lahat, technically lahat, dahil isa lang eh. No? So, they stood up to the challenge at yung isang yun, uh, wala ko tayong bibigay na sanction. No? Karapatan niya yun. We, we respect that right. Pero sir, nabanggit niyo po before na, na magkapatuloy pa rin yung monitoring at saka investigation. Yes, yes, yes. Even without that resignation, ang punto ko rito, Maski hindi magre-resign, maski sino, lahat yan. Dapat lang talaga maging maagap tayo ngayon. No? Kaya ako'y nananawagan kung sa mga taong bayan, sa mga kababayan natin, kung may alam kayo na mga gantong mga ano, magsabi lamang kayo. No? At papalakasin natin ang investigative process dito. Dapat talaga matutukan ng bawat isa. Remember, ang ating, ang, ang ating protector pagdating sa mga problema, sa kapalidad, ay ang ating kapulisyahan. Sabi nga ng Konstitusyon, there should be a police force only national in character and only one police force civilian in character. No? So, klaro po iyan. Yan ang magpaprotect sa atin. Kaya, importante, they've got the highest degree of morality. Napaka-importante niyan. Dahil, mahirap naman, kamukha yung mga police na mga bata, lumalabang ka, Hindi mo alam yung kalaban mo o yung nasa taas mo pa ang kalaban mo. Mahirap na yun. Kawawa din yung polis na yun. At kawawa yung taong pinagsisilbihan. Opo. Opo. Sir, nabanggit po, sorry ma'am. Okay. Nabanggit po na niya sir na uh, yun nga, makakawawa yung mga possible na apektado na itong um, pagkakasungkot ng ilang mga opisyal natin sa illegal na droga. Sir, if ever po na napag-alaman na natin kung sino talaga yung mga... Um, May kaugnayan sa illegal na droga. Isa sa publiko niyo po ba ito, sir? Well, ganito po yan. Ano? Of course, kung malakas ang kaso, demandado yan. Sa kamukha na sinabi ko, no let up in the case buildup. Demandado at papangalanan natin yan. Thank you po. Thank Salamat. you. Any further questions from the floor? Joe Manahan of ABS-CBN News Online. 
flow po, this question is for uh, Secretary Abalos yes, and for PNP Chief Azarin. Uh, ano pong update sa BIDA program natin? And ngayon pong, yun nga po, nire-review natin yung courtesy resignation sa mga police officials. Ano po yung uh, para mga programa natin ngayon? Well, ganito po yan. No? Uh, sana maunawaan ng ating kababayan. Ang kapulisyahan at ang ating po mga NBI, ang PIDEA, sila po ay tigahuli. Pero parang sanga ng puno yan eh. Habang huli ka ng huli, hindi imposibleng may tutubong bagong sanga. Dapat habang pinuputol mo ang sanga, pinuputol mo rin ang ugat. At ang punong ito, ito ang puno ng problema ng droga. Yung po ang ibig sabihin ng BIDA program. It's a whole of nation approach. Alam naman natin, kuminsan ang problema sa droga, ang tinatarget ang mga bata. Ang pressure ng barkada. Yung iba walang trabaho. Yung iba may problema sa pamilya. Low confidence level. So dyan papasok ang interagency. Andyan ang Department of Health for the Rehabilitation. Andyan ang DTI sa mga negosyong pwede maitulong. Andyan ang Department of Labor sa mga trabahong pwede maitulong, mga Chamber of Commerce on the ground. Of course, andyan ang LGUs. Andyan ang BADAC, ang Barangay Anti-Drug Abuse Council. Andyan ang ADAC, ang Anti-Drug Abuse Council. Dal From the ground, alam nila kung sino gumagamit, bawat barangay. Alam nila kung sino nagtutulak. Pwedeng tawagan ito at you know, magbagong buhay. Ito masasabi ko. Ayon sa data, you will be surprised. Lahat ng nakakulong ngayon, 70% are drug-related cases. This is, this is according to the Bureau of Jail and Management. 70%. And this is another issue na nakakatakot. Yung mga nakawala, 30% are repeat offenders or recidivists. Ibig sabihin, umuulit. So kung yung 30% na yun, magkaroon ka ng honest to goodness drug program na hindi sila uulit. For example, maihanap mo ng trabaho, tapos pacheck mo kung talagang gumagamit o hindi. No? Tapos on the ground naman, I'm talking of interagency, on the ground, the church could help. The, the, the school could help, PTA could help, the family as an institution, as an institution. And I tell you this, no? ito yung sinabi sa akin ni General Gilbert Cruz. Merong isang experiment nung daga, nung daga. Yung mga daga, binigyan ng choice. Is it water or water laced with methamphetamine? Alam mo kung saan pumila ang daga? Doon sa drugs. Lahat ng daga naging addict. But they tweaked the experiment. Nilagyan nila maraming activities. Mga maze, mga wheels. So napagod yung daga. And you know after that experiment, saan pumunta daga? Sa tubig. Lahat iniwasan ang drugs. <coughs> At yun ang pwedeng maitulong ng LGU sa buong Pilipinas, Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao. Maraming activities into sports, culture, etc. But have our kids have that confidence to say no to drugs. If the church is with you, the family, everyone, I tell you this, we can defeat this drug problem. <coughs> that is what BIDA is all about. Sir, last na po, ano po yung time frame ng committee and ano yung magiging process? About now? three months. No? That's, uh, sana, sana matapos kami ng three months. The sooner it finishes, this, the better. <coughs> okay, thank you. We have... Uh, time for only one more question from Alan Francisco of PTV4. Please pass the mic. Hi, sirs. Good morning po. Sir, um, kanina <coughs> kinag-uusapan natin mga matataas itong opisyal ng uh, PNP in particular. No? Paano, sir, kung nasa lower, nasa lower ranks yung mga allegedly involved sa narco cops, paano po yung uh, possible investigation sa kanila? Well, it's like this, no? Um, Tuloy-tuloy talaga ang case build-up, ang monitoring. Ang tanong kasi rito, bakit inuna ang general and colonels? At inuulit ko, hindi sila ganong kadami ha, o konti lang ito. Pero maski konti, they could do a lot of damage because they occupy very critical and very sensitive positions. So it's just like, you know, you, you cut off the hydra, the head, and then yung tentacles will follow. So yung sa ilalim, yan, 
investigasyon na yan. Dire-diretsyo na yan. Hanggang dulo. No? If we're not going to do this, remember what we found out? Close to 7 billion of methamphetamine na bodega. Iisang bodega pa lang yun. Ha? After that, <coughs> it could be narco-politics. It could seep through. Because if you will recall, after that incident, after four months, in Taguig, ang nahuli, Pedeya head, head, kasama mga agents in a Pedeya office. So that's why ginagawa nating lahat po ito. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, before we close, I'd like to ask uh, General Azrin if you have anything uh, to add to this presser. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> you still have time or we're good? Uh, oh, sige, isa na lang, isa na lang. Before <laughs> okay, yeah. Michelle <coughs> Gilang. Uh, good afternoon, Post Secretary Abelov. Uh, my question, Paul, may we know the specific guidelines for the screening process? Also, how do we ensure that the screening process uh, will be fair, objective, and transparent by the five-man committee? Well, they will be the ones to have their own guidelines, guidance, no? uh, regulations with reference to this. No? Uh, probably uh, that's why the chief is there to guide them. No, probably pwede tayo mag-suggest ng kung paano but at the end of the day uh, they will be very independent no? ma mahirap ma influence let them decide for their own but we could just provide information intelligence report etc so sir uh, sorry follow up question lang po so there will be no specific guidelines as to how the process will there, there is there is but uh, bibigay namin for them to approve it later on it will also come from them okay okay well, I'm sorry, but I really have to go. Oh. I have to go to the PICC. Thank okay. you so much. Uh, this. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Secretary Abalos, and of course, PNP Chief uh, Rodolfo Azarin as well. Thank you for this uh, morning, and uh, we wish you all the best. Thank you, Daphne. Marami salamat po sa inyo lahat.